Welcome to another in our series of learning Microsoft Access. What I'd like to talk about in today's video is linking to external data. Now, linking to external data is a feature in Access that allows you to have data sets that reside somewhere else outside of Access. It could be a website, it could be uh, a text file, or an Excel file, and even another Access file or SQL Server or database file somewhere else. So what we want to do is show how the uh, linking to external data is done. And what I want to do first is start with a data database uh, that has some linked objects and show you how each one of them ends up linking together into this database and how, basically how to refresh them first. And then once we do that, I want to show you how to then link up several of these other items. There are two ways to do it. First off, you can go to this external data link here and go to the link table manager here. Or if you're, you like to use the context menus, you can right click here, go into the context menu and the link table manager is here. Let's look at that link table manager. And what we find is that there are several items that need to be linked. And what I wanna do is run through all of them in this per particular time. I want to go ahead and select, select them all. I'm going to scoot over here to the right to know which elements I want to link to because I have copies of all these elements. And the scenario that we're really painting here is the fact that the sometimes you have to move a database. And if you move the database, it then has um, the reference to other externally linked objects. They might get corrupted or they might get, they just might need to be different. So. What I want to do is go ahead and click always prompt for a new location. And where my location is, is in this example file up here where I have all these objects sitting here. So what I'm going to do is close that. Now, basically the, the items here, these text files, this is an Excel file There's another and an HTML file here and a, an access database and various different, this is another Excel file, and then the access database again. So what we're gonna do is run through each one of these one at a time and tell it where the new location is going to be. So let's go ahead and get started. So once I've selected, always select check for prompt for a new location, I click okay. And it'll bring me up to the to one here where it asks me, okay, where do I need to find that text file? Well, it's here on my desktop. So what I want to do is click on desktop and I want to open my examples folder and the context contacts fixed dot text file is the one that, that it wants me to select. So here's that contact fixed file and I'll click open. And then it brings me to the next one where it wants me to um, to find the link for this contact text fix complete file is. And if I pull down here, it's pointing to the same file. Now, because Access didn't know whether we needed to still point to the same file, even though it's been given two different names over here, it asked me for the new location twice. So I'll go ahead and click on there and click open. Now it brings me to the very next one. Now. Notice that instead of bringing me back to that examples folder, it decided it, it was encountering a new file type. In other words, here it encountered an XLS file. Now this XLS file is pointing to a specific tab. Now because it's already linked and knows that it's looking for the customer's tab, as long as I point to the right Excel file and that Excel file still has the customer's tab in it, it will automatically find the data. So all I'm really looking for is collect minicars.xls. And I'll go to the desktop, I'll go to examples, and I will go to collectible minicars.xls. And I'll click OK and open. And it brings me to a next one. And it's looking for the lo new location of customer type complete. So this customer type complete, it's moving on down the list as you can see. And it for customer types complete, it needs to find the HTML file. And it's looking for a table in that HTML file called customer types. So I'll click on desktop and examples. And here's my HTML file. 
and I click open and it likes it. So that's good. Moves on to the next one. So it's looking for products complete. So right here, products complete. I'm going to scroll on down here. It's looking for the same collectible mini cars.xls. And since it's looking for that same .xls file, um, I can just click, click on collectible mini cars and click open. And it found that tab in there. Even though it was the same spreadsheet, it was looking for the, a different tab in it. Okay. So then we move on to the next one. It's looking for a database. And so we're looking for table sales. And for table sales complete, the link it's trying to find is in that database here. So I'll go to the desktop, go to my examples, and it's looking for, I'm going to need to go to a different location even. So let me go find that. Okay, that table database there. And it found the table. So it found, I just had to identify where the database was. And then it, it's looking for table sales line items dot XLS for the next one. And down here, I've got that. I click open and it found the tab. And it looks like we're down to our last one here. And it wants to find the chapter link. It already knows where it want, where uh, we looked previously for an XS database. So it pointed me here. So I click open and I've successfully refreshed them all. I get the dialog box that says all collected linked tables were successfully refreshed. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I can close this dialog box and all of my tables, all of my linked objects now, if I double click on them, I'll actually see some data. So that, that becomes uh, really important at this point. So the next thing I want to do then is I want to go look at, um, at this database. I'm going to open it. And notice that it does not have any linked items in it. Now, the way to tell a linked object is that number one, this is a data sheet object, meaning that's the data sheet icon. Even if it were a data sheet from another access database, what will happen is it will show a um, it will show an arrow pointing to this rather than a actual data sheet. So you'll see the arrow pointing to it, meaning it's linking from an object outside of this current database. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and link these access data and link other objects. So I'm going to click external data. I'm going to ask for a new source of data from file. Let's go from file first and let's link to one of those Excel files. Now here, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and browse for the object that you want. And so I'll go to my desktop and go to my examples. Now I've got collectible mini cars. Remember the number of times we link to collectible mini cars. Well, let's go show you how those Excel files actually get linked and pointed to the various tabs. So I'll click open. And down here, instead of choosing import into a new table or import into an existing table, I'm going to link to that spreadsheet and I'm going to click OK here. Now you immediately see that there are three tabs showing up here. The number of worksheets listed are three. Now customers and products are the two that I, I linked to earlier and it looks like my top row also has my field names. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and link to customers and I'm going to click next. And it recognizes that the first row might be column headings, and it is, so I'm going to leave it that way. It has a customer ID, so it comes to here and then it goes ahead and uh, labels it the name of the tab itself. I already have a table customers here, so I'm going to put TBL customers. And then I'm going to put uh, dash late, so we can differentiate the two and see the difference. And I'm going to click OK. It says it's finished linking, and I click OK here. And here's a link table to an Excel. It's, it says customer dash linked. And you when, you when you actually look at table dash customers, it's really the same data. If you click on here and then I click down here to, to customers link, it's, it's the same data. Although 
um, not table vendors. Although this uh, this table may look a little bit differently um, because it's a link table. Okay. So let's let's go through this one more time, a little faster this time. I'm going to go from file from Excel file. I'm going to choose that same collectible mini cars, and I'm going to go ahead and click linked to the data. And when I click OK, I'm going to choose products this time. I'm going to click OK. It recognizes that the first row has headings, and it I verify that it does. I click next. It's products, so I'm going to label that TBL products dash linked. And I click finish and then OK. So while both of these tables here add the same spreadsheet underlying it, they pointed to different worksheets within that spreadsheet. And because they pointed to different worksheets, they are now able to be linked at two separate data. And when I want to relink them, if I decide to move the data around or anything that would disconnect them, I can re uh, relink them simply by pointing to the spreadsheet. Now, let's do a quick one. Let's link from a database. And th for this example, I'll link to access, although pretty much the same um, procedures followed if you link from, Excel, from SQL Server or an Azure database or DBase file, uh, even an Oracle database if you have the ODBC connection already established. So I'm going to click Access here, Open. And I'm going to link to the data source. Now what it's going to do is it's going to show me all the tables that are in that database. And I'm going to be able to select them all, choose one or two or three or however many you need. And I can then bring those into the database. So I'm going to bring the sales table into the database as a linked table. And I'm going to click OK. And quickly as that, the table sales data comes about. Now, you can see that this is really a repetitive operation now. Once you get the hang of doing from a file, it can be any file. It can be a text file or a HTML file, Excel file, such as that. Uh, went from a database, as long as you have an ODBC connection, they're pretty much all the same. You can link to an online service. You can link to other sources. All of these are relatively simple, and you've got the basics down. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.